Hi, everybody. We're back. Welcome back, everyone. We've been gone for a while, but now we're back with the jump off. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. It has taken me so long to like come back to James's house and actually be part of her life again. I've been too busy working like seven shows a fucking week and everywhere. Must be nice yeah. to be booked. Yeah. What can I say? I'm popular and sought after. Well, meanwhile, <laughs> I have been having a long standing blood feud with Lacey Evans. Well, for exactly <laughs> for exactly two days. Yeah. <laughs> remember when Scotty Too High would do the worm and all that build up just to do a chop? Do you remember when Xbox busted his gooch open doing a Bronco Buster at an indie show? Remember when Rikishi put his butt in people's faces? Ooh. These are memories that I shouldn't be as excited about. If only it wasn't Rikishi. Oh. Hi, I'm James Mansfield. And I'm Sylvia Nix. And you're watching Queens, Queens of, of the, the Ring. Ring. Oh, it's been so long since we've said that. I know, it feels so good to be back. Ah. <laughs> In today's episode, we're going to be recounting our choices for our top five worst and best finishers moves. of all time. So for my number five worst, I'm going to go with Santino Morella's Cobra. Really? You don't like the mandible claw? Oh, I like the mandible claw when it was Mr. Sacco. Oh, yeah. But, like, for Santino, like, I know that he, we give him a lot of flack on this channel. Deservedly but so. He definitely deserves it. And, like, his character was fine as a joke, but, like, once you start getting into, like, legend territory and think that your move could possibly match up to Mick Foley's <laughs> mandible claw... <laughs> It just rubs me the wrong way. Remember when Jim Cornette slapped him? Oh, I wish I could watch that clip. On Why is that on the internet? The yes. Dairy Queen thing is all over the place. You can't find that. At least with like Mankind's Mr. Sacco, like you kind of felt like the cringe or the it was fear. In his crotch. Right. <laughs> It and was like, warm. oh, it was gross. And like, it was the attitude. It was the 90s. Also, but like, mankind, like, when he first started doing it, like, he was this character to be feared. And you actually took it as a legitimate, serious threat. That was back when he had like the scary, like, broody yeah. music before he got like the. I, I would like, I and I am unfamiliar with the origin of Mr. Sacco because Mr. Sacco wasn't something that he used to do with the mandible claw in the beginning. But he down the line eventually got it, and I I can't remember where it was or. You what should the have asked him when was. you met him. I should have. Bing. Yeah. <laughs> Spicy slice. But also, if you remember where Mr. Sacco came from, please tell me down below. Okay, so what's your number five worst finisher? Well, this one may piss a few of the smarks off, but I actually don't like this move just because of how dangerous it is. Okay. It is the turnbuckle power bomb. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. I don't like it. And I think that's fair. I, well, here's the thing, it doesn't really get a rise out of anyone when you see it. No. And that, and it's just dangerous. It's hurt how many people now, either it's in the corner or it's in the outside of the post. It's just not a good move. I'm going to say I like the buckle bomb if it's used on an opponent where I don't fear for their life. Like, he definitely should never have done that to Sting. But if I see it done on somebody like a Roman Reigns or a Dean Ambrose, who I know can take it properly, I'm like, I get a little bit of a pop But those were beefy guys. You're right. throwing somebody like Sting or Finn Balor, or my right. baby, into that. Right. Like, those are smaller dudes. Like, there's not much padding and there. And they're going to get killed if they take that the wrong way. So, yeah, no, I respect that from a safety perspective. That's my Vince McMahon moment. That move is banned! All right, what is your number four? My number four worst? Yes. Ooh, you know, I didn't really put a lot of thought into this review. I'm not going to lie. I don't <laughs> think of moves that I hate all that often. Lots I'm, of research and development goes into the making of the show, kids. I'm probably going to say, maybe this is a cop-out. I think any move that Eugene stole. Just in regards that the Eugene character was doing them? Yes. Um, I guess it's sort of fair. It wasn't the best character by a long it shot. It wasn't the best character, and oh, I should have thought that one. All of the moves that he took from other people, like, they, it just, when he did them, they looked cheap. And he cheapened them. It was the 90s. Oh, no. It was, it, it was way past where that character should have been acceptable. Yeah. The character should have never been acceptable, but it was, it was way, not good. way past where somebody would have called that out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that Eugene cheapened everything that he did, um, except for the airplane spin. I actually liked that move um, just because it's a classic piece and um, it's good to see it be used from time to time. But other than that, like when he was in the Eugene character, 
it didn't look intimidating to me. Um, I'm gonna turn my phone volume off because it just <laughs> dinged. <laughs> I didn't mind. Hi guys, I promise we care about you. <laughs> All right, my number four worst is actually the sitting face buster, also known as the X Factor. Oh, that's another move that Tori Wilson copied. Yeah, yeah. All the girls had that move. Tori Wilson, Ivory, uh, Don yep. Marie. Uh, that was Ivory, yep. It was a go to, Fit Finley really loved to give that move out to people. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like something girls could easily do. But no, like, again, it's just like, it's overused. And also it's kind of dangerous to people's spines and butt muscles. And their face. Yeah, that too. Like, and also like, it's just kind of, eh, maybe I'm getting nitpicky with professional wrestling. It's kind of a, a hard one to think that somebody would actually like, get done to them because you have them bent over and you're depending on the fall like and it's a short fall right again it's like slamming someone's face into the mat like it has to be caught by surprise one yeah and two it has to be from a distance enough to where it seems dangerous right like it could actually stun you that it's like falling down and scraping your knee like yeah you get right back up from it right like my number three worst is gonna be whatever the hell brian byron saxton's finisher was Brian Saxton wrestled? Byron Saxton wrestled for a hot minute. And he had the weirdest, most convoluted finisher that looked just absolutely fucking stupid. It's hard for me to describe, so if you can find a video to link, it would be ideal. It's, I didn't even know there was such a thing. It's horrendous. It's horrendous. Did David Otonga wrestle too? And so did Corey Graves, sweetheart. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What about Renee Young? No. Michael Cole? Uh, we don't want to talk about those memories. Okay. <laughs> WrestleMania 27 didn't exist. We'll, we'll, move on. <laughs> we'll move on. My number three worst is actually punches. Finishing with oh, a punch. Like the WMD? That or yeah. even the woman's right. I am not a fan of it. <laughs> Honey. I just don't like it. <laughs> I don't buy it. You're, the, you're, you're just throwing that in there just to piss Lacey off a little bit more. Oh, she's not checking for me. No, but like, honestly, like, punches have always annoyed me. Like, you know, William Regal. Um, William Regal's I'm going to accept as a signature move, maybe not a finisher, because the power of the punch had the brass knuckles. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it worked for me. And also, he would usually follow it up with something like the Regal Stretch. Again, it's like a punch. It has to be believable enough to where it's devastating. But, like, it's always, like, the soft glove. Me. Yeah. And, like, it doesn't... It's so unbelievable to me. Right. Although, I would never want to take a punch from somebody like the Big Show. It's just a fucking lame move to see. <laughs> His punches were shit. Right. I. You know what? I actually think Big Show's choke slam was one of the most underrated choke slams ever. Because he's lifting those dudes up really high and then forcing them down into the mat. And he usually fell with them. Why would you get rid of something that looked that terrifying and just replace it with a lame-ass punch? Well, that it's usually people that don't really sell it for me as being good punchers. Right. Like if it was a boxer turned wrestler, sure, I'll yeah. go with it. Like if CM Punk had some kind of move set that was like a punch, I would believe that. Road dogs were pretty fucking stupid, but the way he'd like wiggled with them, like I didn't buy it as a finisher, but I, I popped because it's it's the road dog. <laughs> <laughs> it was DX in the nineties and it was the thing to do. Yep. All right, what is your number two worst? My number two worst is the Playmaker. Oh, God. <laughs> such a stupid... How does it hurt? Right, like, maybe your wrist would hurt, but honestly, <laughs> the majority of it that you're... You're taking it in your knee. They're not, like, <laughs> feeling any kind of pain beyond any of that. It like, reminds me of a steak bite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, like, it wasn't even so much the fact, like that the playmaker exists it's that the playmaker existed on two planes one they gave it to randy orton and oh, they decided that. that randy orton's like finisher didn't look believable it didn't look like a finisher and so instead of like just sweeping that under the rug and saying we're never going to use this finisher again they gave it to mvp like why like mvp was a good wrestler he didn't deserve something as lame as a randy orton reject finisher it as i said before it looks like the majority of the damage is being done to yourself in your knee and i understand it's got like the neck breaker twist and whatnot but like meh meh uh, meh yeah it's terrible <laughs> <laughs> my number two is dance finishers Okay, like the road dogs. The road dog, the worm. Yep, they're all pretty stupid. Even boil down to a people's elbow. <gasps> Sorry, I don't believe it. I don't, don't buy it. Ever insult the people's elbow. <laughs> <laughs> turn your volume off. It is off. 
Okay, so yeah, you're right. The People's Elbow is one of the stupidest finishing moves of all time. And so are all dance finishers, but god damn, if it doesn't get me going when I see The Rock delivering it. <laughs> <laughs> I think as a child, like, The People's Elbow holds a special place in my heart because as a child, like, Every kid wants to catch a baseball or something. I've always wanted to catch The Rock's um, elbow pad. Doing a dance move is great heel heat or face heat because yep. it is legit like the wrestling equivalent of teabagging while playing Halo. Right. Like, <laughs> you're just like rubbing it into people's faces. But there is no reason in hell that anybody should be able to get a three count after a dance finisher. No. It's like you're laying down and selling too much before that weak ass move like right the worm right <laughs> that was a finisher in no mercy right <laughs> and you know what's hysterical about like a lot of these dance finishers like the rocks was started as a joke mm -hmm. like all of the dance finishers i can't think of a single one that was ever started because somebody was like i'm gonna dance before my finisher what um, is your number one my number one a lot of you are gonna hate me for this what is it it's the canadian destroyer <laughs> It's a terrible, terrible move. The most indie rific move in all existence. It's the fucking worst. <laughs> I can't think of a single time where I saw this move and I was like, oh, cool. Like, no, it's lame. Like, it's just the logistics of it don't make any sense. They don't. And like, like it's so much work. And, and you have to like, your partner has to do it with you. Otherwise, it just wouldn't happen. Like, you're, the thing, like, the sunset flip exists, and yes. I believe that, because you're, like, taking them down by their legs. The Canadian Destroyer, I don't believe anybody who uses it as a finisher is strong enough to be able to take the weight of the people taking it. At the end of the day, it's a pile driver, and WWE has out and out banned pile drivers. So the fact that they're letting Adam Cole do this, and arguably a Canadian Destroyer has the capacity to injure somebody more than a real one, mm -hmm. I don't get it. I hope that when Adam Cole makes it to the main roster, one, they don't ruin him, two, they give him something cooler. Fucking Canadian Destroyer. <laughs> it's totally the action figures move. Oh, it is. What you do when you're a kid. <laughs> yeah. Put to life, yes. yeah. Yeah. All, All right, right, what's your number one, girl? Okay, so for you old school wrestling marks, this may irritate you, but it's just a move I've never liked. Yeah. Okay. So, the leg drop as a finishing move. From the top rope, like a Matt Hardy leg drop? No, like on the ground, jumping leg drop. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We're talking like your Hulk Hogan. Yeah, no, the Hulk Hogan leg drop is stupid. It's flat out bullshit. It's I'm not buying it, sis. The worst. Yeah, no. It's I, all hype. It's all Vince McMahon shoving it down my throat. I don't believe it, girl. I can't think of a single move that I actually would hate more. I'm actually jealous that you said that as your number one <laughs> before I did. <laughs> Yeah, the leg drops are all terrible, unless you're, like, Matt Hardy, or, like, who's doing it from, like, the top rope or the second rope. Also, like, I will, I will say this, like, as far as my respect for the leg drop goes, I will say, since wrestling was so over in the 80s at the time, the mm. fact they managed to convince people that they were strong enough to deliver a leg drop that would down somebody for three seconds. That's how Hulk Hogan beat Andre the Giant. <laughs> It's like, you could have just ended it after the fucking body slam. You had to give him the leg drop. I mean, I get it was the 80s. We were all on <gasps> coke. Ronald Reagan sucked. But like, no, I'm not buying it. Sorry. Yeah. Man. You can't capture this one at a time capsule for me. I'm sorry. Well, and also, if you're thinking of the safety of the wrestler, that is no, there is no way in hell you can repeatedly deliver a leg drop without suffering major spinal damage down the line. Oh, yeah. Look at Hogan now. Yeah. Oh, it's painful. Oh, yeah, right. it's dumb and I don't like it. All right, should we go into our favorites? Ah! Yeah. 